Hello friends. In this video, I'm going to discuss about cerebral aneurysms. The first question is, what is the most common type of cerebral aneurysm? So the most common type of cerebral aneurysm is a circular aneurysm. Otherwise known as the Berry aneurysm. Okay, so this is the most common type of cerebral aneurysm. But there is an exception. And that exception is about the basilar artery. If they ask you what is the most common type of aneurysm in basilar artery, the answer is fusiform. Most common type of cerebral aneurysm is secular aneurysm, but in the basilar artery, it is the fusiform type of aneurysm that is most common. Next question is what is the most common location? Remember, around 90% of the cases around 90% of the cases happens in anterior circulation. Anterior circulation. So if you know about the circular phyllis, it has an anterior circulation and it has a posterior circulation. And 90% of the cases happens in anterior circulation. And if they ask you what is the single most common location, it has to be junction of anterior communicating artery and anterior cerebral artery. So junction of anterior communicating artery and anterior cerebral artery. From this image, you can understand uh, the aneurysms usually happens at the branch points, at the branch points where the vessel wall is maximally thin. Now, most of the cases of cerebral aneurysms, those are sporadic. Okay. So most cases are sporadic. Usually these are associated with smoking, ancestral doses. And uh, but there are uh, some cases which are genetic, that means they are associated with genetic syndromes. And those syndromes include autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease, neurofibromatosis type 1, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome type 4, and Marfan syndrome. So these are some of the genetic syndromes where uh, there is an increased uh, risk of cerebral aneurysm formation. Grossly, the circular or berry aneurysms, these are 2 to 3 centimeter in diameter, and they have a red Signy translucent wall. In histopathology, what you are going to get? In histopathology, there will be absent, absent smooth muscles and internal elastic lamina. So absence of smooth muscles and internal elastic lamina. And the intima will be completely hyalinized as you can see here. So there is hyalination. So, highly nice intima, highly nice intima, covered by adventitia, covered by adventitia. So, due to absence of smooth muscles and internal elastic lamina, there will be highly nice of the intima and it will just be covered by a layer of adventitia. So, this is what you are going to get. This is what you are going to get in histopathology. So, absence of smooth muscles and internal elastic lamina. What about the clinical features? The clinical features in uh, cerebral aneurysm, it can be of two types. Either it can be due to compression of this, um, because of this um, dilatation, they can compress the surrounding structures. So clinical features can arise from compression of surrounding structures. Or sometimes these aneurysms can rupture and that can cause subarachnoid hemorrhage. Now subarachnoid hemorrhage I will discuss in the next video. In this video, I'll just tell uh, silent points about the compression related symptoms. Now, what, what, what is going to happen if there is an anterior communicating artery aneurysm causing compression of the surrounding structures? Now, if you see, this is the anterior communicating artery. If there is an aneurysm here, it can easily compress the opticism. It can easily compress the opticism. So, ACOM aneurysm, ACOM aneurysm. It can compress the opticism, opticism, and we all know if there is compression opticism, it can cause bitemporal hemianopia. It can cause bitemporal hemianopia. But if there is a rupture, if there is rupture, there will be hemorrhage. There will be hemorrhage in the anterior cerebral artery territory. Hemorrhage in the anterior cerebral artery territory. Whenever there is anterior cerebral artery territory hemorrhage. It can cause bilateral lower limb weakness with sensory loss. Okay. So ACO territory, in fact, or hemorrhage can cause <clears throat> it can cause 
bilateral lower limb weakness with sensory loss. If there is a MC aneurysm, if there is MC aneurysm, and if it ruptures, if MC aneurysm ruptures, it will cause it will cause bleeding. It will cause bleeding in the MCA territory, middle cerebral artery territory. And if there is in fact, or hemorrhage in the middle cerebral artery territory, it can cause <coughs> contralateral hemiparesis with sensory loss. Okay. It can cause contralateral hemiparesis with sensory loss. Then if there is P come and there is posterior communicating artery aneurysm, as you can see here, this is the uh, posterior communicating artery. Okay. So this is the posterior communicating artery. And you can see it is closely related to cranial artery or the oculomotor nerve. Okay, so if there is aneurysm in the PCOM artery, it can easily compress cranial of three. It can easily compress the cranial of three. And if there is compression of the cranial of three, it can cause dilatation of the pupil, dilatation of pupil. And also the eyes will be down and out, down and out pupil. Because cranial of three, the oculomotor nerve supplies all the extraocular muscles except. The lateral lectus, which is supplied by the cranial of six, and the superior oblique, which is supplied by the cranial of four. So, whenever there is cranial of three damage, all the extraocular muscles are affected except superior oblique and lateral lectus. And because of the function of the superior oblique and lateral lectus, the eyeballs or sorry, the pupils will be down and out. Okay, and also there will be dilatation of the pupils. So, these are all the important points about the cerebral aneurysms. There is one more type of uh, cerebral aneurysm. Those are actually micro aneurysms. Those are known as the charcot brocard aneurysms. We'll discuss that when we will discuss about the cerebral hemorrhage that is mostly associated with hypertension and they cause uh, <clears throat> internal capsule hemorrhage.